welcome all of you that are here in this room with us, but all of those who are viewing by way of YouTube or listening by way of iTunes. We know for a fact that as of this morning, we had, I think it was 54 people who watched the um, last Sunday's message on YouTube alone. And so we know that all of a sudden, week to week to week, we're getting anywhere from 50 to 60, and the highest one has been 88 views of a Sunday morning service. And um, yeah, I, I just, I think that always amazes me. And, and um, you know, of course, of course, it's, it, there, some of them are folks that we know. Some of them are folks that love Canvas Church but don't live in town. And of course, but it's always great to be able to make that much more of an impact or to have that many more people saying, you know, that touched my life or that. And, and you know, when we really saw that was when we were doing our series on grace. Um, we really saw folks just, just tuning in and kind of connecting with us like that. And that really was an awesome, awesome blessing. Um, we want you to know, and I, I, on the way in here, you got um, your second week's worth of notes for today. A lot of the scripture that we're going to be doing is going to be on these, um, these, note, uh, these note pages. And uh, we also have leftovers from last week. If you missed last Sunday, last Sunday's notes are out there as well. So in other words, what I'm trying to tell you is each week you can Get, get these, and you can keep them, and it'll be the whole study for you just to be able to staple them at the top, keep them in your Bible or whatever, file them away, give them to a friend, whatever works. The other thing we're doing um, is that we've got these invite cards, the supernatural invite cards, where uh, we're, it's just such a right season to do a series about the supernatural with all that is being shown on TV and Halloween coming up, and people are wondering, and people are not, movies are coming out that deal with the supernatural, and it's just the right timing for it all, and we just think that it's really God's plan um, for, for Canvas Church, and I'm really excited about today. Last week we did week number one, and uh, we titled last week, All That Is Unseen. And we talked about all that is unseen, the spirit realm, and we had to begin with the basics, that there is a spirit realm. And that number two, that God is spirit. We talked about the omnis that God is. That he's omnipotent, all-powerful. That he's om omnipresent, where he's everywhere at one time. And he's omniscient. And he's all-knowing. We talked about God being spirit. And he connects with man, first and foremost, on a spirit level. I know that God didn't connect with me, first and foremost, on a flesh level. He connected with me, first and foremost, on a spirit level. And oftentimes, that process is where he is creating that hunger, like Suzette talked about earlier, or that thirst for something bigger than what we're living in every day. Something bigger than just the typical 40 hours at work. Something bigger than the, than the, the problems with the mortgage or the problems with the marriage. Something bigger than that. We needed to connect spirit to spirit. And God said, I'm spirit. He declared that about himself. He says, I'm spirit. As a matter of fact, when uh, in, in the book of Genesis, um, it was a conversation among the Trinity. And he says, let us create man in our image. Let us create man in our image. And it wasn't that God is, you know, like me, five foot eight and a half. Let's hope God's bigger than that. But God is spirit. He's spirit. And he wanted to connect with man in spirit. Third thing that we said last week is that what happens in the spirit realm affects your world. It does. It does. What happens in the spirit realm, it does affect your world. Well, let's just take it even to the most positive of elements. If you're a believer, or if you're in church today, or whatever you want to look at as it relates to Christianity, for some reason today, you're hearing something that's not just about something I created or wrote or put together, or because I love speaking in front of people that I made this up, but my life's been impacted, and today you're hearing about something spiritual. And maybe some of you will leave this place having been stirred or having been drawn closer to God. And who knows, who knows, maybe, that your life for, could forever be changed. Who knows? Last week, seven people raised their hands and said, I want to be right with God. What do I have to do to do that? And we prayed. Wednesday night at youth service, five kids raised their hands and said, I want to be right with God. And we prayed. So 12 people over the course of the last few days have had what happens in the spirit realm affect their world. And so today, that leads us into uh, week number two. 
And we're going to talk today about destinations. Destinations when it comes to the supernatural. We're titling today, Forever is a Long, Long Time. Forever is a long, long time. You know, last week we, um, we jumped into Colossians chapter 1, verse 16. It says this. It says, for by him, meaning God, all things were created. Things in heaven and things on earth. Things visible and invisible. Whether they were thrones or powers or rulers or authorities, all things were created by him and for him. That God is, the, is ultimately in charge of all that happens in the spirit realm. All that happens ultimately in this earth realm we live in. He's also in charge of so many other things that have to do with our eternity, our future. And we probably are at a little bit of a disadvantage as humans because we don't think of things often in eternal scopes. We don't. We think of like, we're going we gonna to pay that bill in the first of the month. Am I going to be able to help my teenager through that crisis? Am I, am I going to be able to buy that purchase with the stock market looking like it is? Am I, and, and we think a little bit more um, finite and, and, and practical. And it's not way too often do we sit here and just kind of mull over eternity. Today we're going to do that. We're going to talk about heaven. We're going to talk about hell. And I, I just realized something. I have said the word hell before in conversations. I've said it in times of anger. Um, but, um, but basically, as far as a teacher, I'm not positive I've really ever taught about it and I, until, until now. And I've been done with this message for about four weeks now and just kind of been revisiting it once a week, just kind of refreshing it and stuff like that. But I'm sitting here thinking, this isn't somewhere I go every week. And I thought, well, Why? And I think the first reason is a lot of ministers are afraid to mention it because it will run people off. But sometimes you got to teach your kids not to run out into the streets. And you have to explain to them the dangers of running out into the streets. You have to explain to them that there is a cause and effect for everything that we do. And my goal today is to open up your eyes, my eyes, all of our eyes to the heart of God. The heart of God. And my goal is to kind of explain. If, I, if I've come to know anything about the heart of God, it's that he unconditionally loves me. You know, I'm a parent of three amazing girls. And, you know, we don't always agree on stuff. And, and things don't always go the way I think they should go in the house and stuff like that. And, you know, we just get into zones of flat-out disagreement or getting them in trouble. And, you know, just like any other household goes. But I'm going to tell you this. No matter the offense, the heart of the dad never quits loving the daughter. And I'm just a guy. I'm just a human. Think how much the more... That God the Father would be in his love for his creation. And so I want to I have that be the, the kind of the first thing that's thrown out there is the heart of God is driven, beats to love you. Yeah, right where you're at. Right where you're at. To love you unconditionally. And that's an attribute, that's a characteristic of God. It is. But this morning when we start talking about eternal destinations, we also have to talk about another very important attribute of God's character. And that's that he is a righteous and just God. Now there was a little bit of an amen when I said that he loves us unconditionally. There wasn't so much of that just then. <laughs> 